Bournemouth, on the beautiful south coast of England, is the town to play host to Ultra Quiz 1985. <laughs> tonight, Stu Francis and Sarah Hollenby. Oh, Are we ready? Yes, we're ready! Now let's bring in the Ultra Quiz contestants! Yeah! £10,000 treasure trail and then next week we're off to Jersey then it's Stratford, Blackpool, Scarborough, Heber Castle, Alton Towers and then our grand final in eight weeks time right back here in Bournemouth where someone and we don't know who yet but they're here in our horde of happy hopefuls yes here stands someone who's gonna walk away with £10,000 in cash and, and the holiday of a lifetime yeah. Yeah. And that, my friends, makes it the biggest prize on British television. Oh, Stu, just think of it. £10,000 in cash. I know. You'd need a walking wallet. <laughs> hey, that'd buy you a gallon of petrol. But I wonder who it's going to be. Well, we'll have a better idea soon, because coming up in the next hour, we've got quizzes and questions galore. Yes, and they're all designed to find our fittest fighters, because we're only taking 50 people with us to Jersey for part two. Right. So let's get the show on the road with the help of our right royal ringmaster, Mr. Jim Davidson. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the 
here. Hello. Hi, Jim. How are you? Oh, nice to see you. I'm not kissing you. Could you see all them people go like that? Oh, now I know how Moses felt when he parted the Red Sea. Great, eh? Great parade. Oh, it's fantastic. Did you see the still walker? Yeah. The still walker? Poor fella. He's got a bad leg. Pulled muscle? No, woodworm. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that fire eater. I tell you, that's the worst case of bad breath I've ever seen. I can tell you that. But it's a smashing day, and it? it's really cheered me up. Are you fed up, Jim? Well, yeah, I haven't been in the papers this morning. <laughs> that makes a change. Yes, thank you, Stuart. <laughs> Enough of that. Thank you. So this is Ultra Quiz. Yeah, this is Ultra Quiz. Fabulous. Yeah. One of these people here, Jim, are going to walk away with ten thousand pounds. All in one pound coins. Oh, well, actually, actually, we caught a fella trying to nick nick it. Nick nick it. Yeah, trying to nick it, but he's he's in trouble now. What the police nick nick him? No, he did himself a mischief trying to carry it. Oh, but he didn't. No, not you boys. Don't I? In order to win the cash prize, yes. we're going to be asking the contestants questions along yeah. the way. Like what? Like um, if a tightrope walker had her lunch in the middle of her act, would that mean she's on a balanced diet? Think about it. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather not think about that one, actually, you know. But do you know what I like? Talking of funny jokes like that. <laughs> I love the clowns. Clowns. Oh, I love so do I. When you think, hey, big red nose, baggy clothes, screaming and shouting. That reminds me, I must phone the wife. <laughs> do you know my mate applied for a job in the circus, old Chalky? Did he? He phoned up and said, Mummy, I'm applying for the advertisement you put in the newspaper. <laughs> Did he get it? No, no, they said he didn't have the right qualifications. What were they? White face clown. White <laughs> face clown. It's the best I can think of this time in the afternoon. It's very good, Jim. Thank I tell you. you, but I'll tell you, I do. Speaking of clowns, if you want a good laugh, enjoy yourself. I don't think you can beat clowns. In fact, give me clowns any day. Give you clowns, my son. Stand effect more. Clowns, I'll give you clowns. Ladies and gentlemen, the ultra quiz. Fancical fasters. Fancical fancers. Here they are. Car. Ain't got a bond of bright green money. Clothes on my back, off the rack. But no one, so what? I don't care, cause you know what I've got? I've got fabulous feet. I love my fabulous feet. Oh, I am filled with devotion. Shine their emotion when they're just keeping up. Surprised all the people I meet Go into shock, what a scandal Cause no one holds a candle To me and my fabulous feet Oh, you can keep your money Keep your car Keep your fancy clothes Cause we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine And talented toes on the end of my fabulous feet Sit back, relax, you're in for a treat We'll entertain and amuse you So let me introduce you To me and my fabulous face
is fantastic. And do you know, Sarah, out there then, there were some of the most famous clowns in Britain today. Do you know what, Stu? I wondered if you'd recognise any of them. Three of them, anyway. What do you mean? Three of them. Come over here, I'll show you. Who? They're coming up now. Oh, hey. there is. Hey! Yeah. Here, Stu, Stu. Oh. Who's this? Who's this? Let me have a look, let me have a look. It smells of horses. Heidi, hi. Heidi, hi! Ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to see you without the horses. Actually, talking about horses, you know my, my grandfather, when he died, left all his money to sick animals. Really? Yeah. He didn't know they were sick when he backed them. <laughs> I know the feeling. Listen, speaking of horses, are you still riding? Well, when I get my licence back. But you know, I'm a granddad. Would you believe I'm a granddad? I've got three little grandsons. I have three little... And I'm very proud of being a granddad. Very proud. Mind you, he's got his drawbacks. What's that? You have to sleep with a granny. You <laughs> sleep with a granny. Felix Bonnet, thanks for coming. Let's have a look. Who's, Who's this? this? I don't know. Let me look. Let me look. Okay. I, I used to be a soldier. Give used me to be a soldier. Uh, Looks like Rod Stewart. Used to be a soldier. Yes. Uh, Is hello. this real? Hello, lovely boy. No, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Melvin Hayes, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Okay, my lovely boy. I will have no gossip in this jungle. Okay, lucky. Smashing. It's all right, Gloria. I mean, Melvin. Yes. The beer. The beer's real. Yeah, we see. I'm, I'm growing it. I'm doing this show. It's called um, My Fat Friend. My Fat Friend. Yes. That's why I'm growing the beard. I see. The muscles well, are coming next week. Well, every success with the tour, and thanks for coming to see us, Melvin Hayes, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Hey, Stu. Stu. Now, who's this on the end? Who's this on the end? Woo! Like a space invader. Ghostbuster. We know you are, don't we? Yes. Yes, the hair doesn't. No, you don't know. I'll squeam and I'll squeam. <laughs> Go on, say it for me, please, say it for me. Go on, please. Go on. I'll squeam and squeam and squeam until I'm sick and I can. Yes, of course, it's Bobby Langford. Bobby! Oh, lovely. That's better. See, couldn't fool us for a minute. And I believe you've come all the way down here from my part of the world, haven't you? From yes. Manchester. From Manchester, yes, because I'm in uh, Pirates of Penzance at the Opera House there. Lovely. Singing war. Well, when I get home, I'll come and see you. Yes, yeah, I'd Together love with you. thousands of other people, I'm sure. Oh, and I believe you have something for us? A special gold envelope. It's not for the Oscars, mm. it's for this show. <laughs> it's for this show, it is indeed. In here, we have the questions to our very first game for our Ultra Quizzes. So, let's get right on with the game now. Can we say thank you once again to Felix Bonus, Melvin Hayes, and the lovely Come on, gather round, come and join Stu, come and join Sarah, because this is the big moment, the moment we've all been waiting for. It's the first game in Ultra Quiz, 85. Don't forget, £10,000 and the holiday of a lifetime. Right then, in here we have the questions. Now listen very, very carefully, won't you? Because very shortly, I'm going to ask you a question, and you'll be given a choice of three answers. Because, as you can see, you're surrounded by three very large circles, in the centre of which is one of our lovely Ultra Quiz dancers. Now, each of those circles does represent one of the answers, because that's how we intend to be at the start of Ultra Quiz 85. Very generous, very kind, and very easy on you, all right? But please be warned, as the show goes on, it gets harder and harder. So, listen very, very carefully, Ultra Quizzers. Here we go. Our first question, our first game. The question is, the famous clown, Grok, used to delight audiences by taking a tiny musical instrument from an enormous case. Was this musical instrument a guitar, a harp, or a violin? I'll repeat that. The famous clown, Grok, used to delight audiences by taking a tiny musical instrument from an enormous case. Was this instrument a guitar, a harp, or a violin? OK, we're going to give you a couple of seconds to think about your answer. All right. I'm then going to blow the whistle very, very shortly. From then on, you've only got 20 seconds. All right. Girls, if you'll hold up the signs. There we are. Our dancers are now revealing, our Ultra Quiz dancers are revealing the signs. All right. Well, I'm going to blow the whistle. You've got 20 seconds to get yourselves into a circle. All right. 20 <laughs> seconds from... No! All right, Ultra Quiz is that. Oh, we all seem very certain over here. We're very definite. We've got two behind me going for the harp. But everyone else appears to have gone 
into this circle representing our violin. Well, Ultra Christmas, we don't need 20 seconds, do we? Because we've already Four, made three, up our decision. Two, one. Everybody stay exactly still, all right? To make sure nobody moves, let's bring on the Lion Tamer and the Bournemouth Bone Crushers. The Bournemouth Bone Crushers. Good grief, look at the sound of these bones. There's not that much meat on that butcher's counter. He's got muscles in his eyelashes, this fella. There we are. These boys are going to be in control all afternoon to make sure nobody moves, all right? Was this instrument a guitar, a harp, or a violin? The answer is a violin. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've got to say bye-bye to just two of our competitors. OK, Bone Crushers, put the losers into the lion's den. The lion's den? Lion's den. Charming. You've never been the same since you saw Julius Caesar, have you? Right then, bye-bye to our two competitors. Off we go. That's our lion table as well. That's it. Show them the way into the lion's den. Bye. Ooh, who's going to survive our next game? Join us with the winners after the break. Datapost collects and guarantees next day delivery throughout Britain. Top speed international service too, to all five continents. Just dial 100, ask for free phone Datapost and we'll collect. Datapost, it has the organisation behind it. Where beer is cool and hearts are warm The girl I left behind Perhaps she's missing me as I'm missing her The warmth, the fun, my friends The games we used to play But most of all, green or Whitley Most of all, I'm missing you Someday I'm going back to the taste I know To make the right move, think beyond to an extra dimension. Time. Time you gain from a major communications network. Time saved with efficient use of space. And time a skilled workforce gives your business. Discover how Warrington Runcorn's extra dimension will put time and more on your side. Phone Warrington 33334 now. Cause it's a bigger, better bottle of the same low price With a new fruity taste that's rather nice Only big new quash can quench The big bad thirst Wouldn't it be nice not to need money? On a P&O Canberra cruise this autumn You won't need it for English breakfast Deck sports Ice cream Morning coffee Golf practice Lunch as well as dinner Afternoon tea Movies Show nights, discos, even cabarets. On a P&O Canberra cruise, you don't need money to enjoy yourself. Call in at your travel agent. It won't cost a penny. For every 50 cars we take in part exchange at A&B, fewer than 20 are offered for resale to A&B customers. The better cared for ones.
Now, Sarah, where were we? Game two. Ah, yes, game two. And still we have all these Bonnie Battlers left in Ultra Quiz 85. So now it's time for some ruthless elimination. Because don't forget, we're taking fewer than 50 people on with us to Jersey and round two. Right. So now we're going to put your knowledge of circuses to the test. Yeah. Are you ready for the first question? And here it is. Listen to the question. Which great French mime artist created the character of Bip the Clown? Was it Marcel Marceau or Jacques Tati? If you think it's Marcel Marceau, go to the blue circle. If you think it's Jacques Tati, go to the red circle. You have five seconds after the whistle. Go quick! Decision. Right, we've all made our decisions, yes. Nobody move as of now. In come the bone crushers, nobody must move. Are you in position, bone crushers? Are you ready for the answer? That's it, come on, boys. Mm. Hold them back. Was the great French mime artist created the character of Bip the Clown? Was it Marcel Marceau or Jacques Tati? The answer is Marcel Marceau! Contestants there in the red circle. Off they go. Say goodbye to all the losers. Into the lion's den. Off you go. Yes, here you go. And off they go. Into the lion's den. Bye bye. Are you still excited? I know. I'm so excited. Ooh, I could duff a daffodil. Right, Ultra Quizzes, come on, come and join Stu. All gather round nice and close because we're about to have a horse parade. That's it, come in nice and close because, believe me, get out of the way, give these horses plenty of room because, ooh, they could crush your foot. We're now going to see a parade of horses, after which we're going to put your horse sense to the test with a few questions. All right, then, here we go. We're under starters' orders. And they're off. Now then, leading our parade of horses into the arena, we have Shetland ponies. Now, Shetlands are the oldest of our native breeds. They're extremely strong. They were used in the coal mines in the 18th and 19th centuries. And there's an Arab horse, a star of Chipperville Circus. And who could forget this man? Yes, it's the great Bob Champion. Both. That's it, a nice big round of applause. 
Bob, Bob and Albany to recover from ill health against all the odds and won the 1981 Grand National. Now our Shire horse is called Prince and he's just three years old. He's 18 hands and three inches and his owners hope that he'll soon become the biggest Shire horse in the world. And from Peacehaven, home for horses and donkeys, we have eight-year-old Bertie. Bertie the donkey and six-year-old Ultra the mule. Now this is one of the most famous racehorses ever, Red Run. He's famous because, among other things, he's won the Grand National three times. And we have some Falabellas. Falabellas are the smallest breed of horse in the world. They mustn't exceed 34 inches at the shoulder. There are only 20 purebred Falabellas in this country, and this is one of them. And as the tension begins to mount here in Bournemouth, we're going to sort out the thoroughbreds from the also rams now in our Ultra Quiz Handicap. Right, now who's going to make the running in the 9 o'clock at Bournemouth? Here's your first question. In which year did Red Rum come back to win the Grand National for a record third time? Was it 1977 or 1980? If you think it's 1980, go to the blue circle. If you think it's 1977, go to the red circle. You've got 10 seconds from the whistle. Go for it! Come on, Ultra Quizzes, what's it gonna be? Go on, make your decision. 1977 or 1980, come on, time's always up. Decision time, come on. He thinks he's make on the spot. So well, he's decide. been up forwards four times. There they we go, decide. that's it. That's right. it, time's up, nobody but, move. Come on, bone crushers, separate the masses. That's it, in come the boys. Right, are you all ready? In which year did Red Rum come back to win the Grand National for a record third time? Was it 1977 or 1980? The answer is 1977! <laughs> And we're rejoicing over here in the red circle. Yes, indeed, it's congratulations to all our competitors in the red circle. And we're now going to invite them to stand into the multicolored circle, ready for our next question. So, Ultra Quizzers, if you'd like to go and take up your position in the multicolored circle, because we're going to fire our next question at you. All right? So, back on your toes. All nice and cosy, that's it. Into the multicolored circle. Make sure you're stood within the circle. Your next question. In which South American country were Felabella's first bred? Was it in Argentina or Brazil? In which South American country were Felabella's first bred? Was it in Argentina or was it in Brazil? If you think it was Brazil, into the blue circle. If you think it was Argentina, get yourself into the red circle. Ultra quizzes, 10 seconds from now. That's it, as fast as you can. Was it Argentina, was it Brazil? Time's up. So, the answer is Argentina. Right then, so congratulations are in order once again. As you can see, we've still got all these runners out there in the field. Why not join us in the final straight right after the break? See you then. Introducing a new air freshener that freshens the air for weeks and weeks. Roll Fresh from Hayes. Now this isn't your run-of-the-mill air freshener. It gives nasty smells a good hiding and hides itself as well. What's more, when duty calls, Roll Fresh swings into action with an immediate extra boost. So, in lieu of an ordinary air freshener, try new Roll Fresh in your loo. 
watch out for the new Air Tours Autumn Through Spring brochure. It's bursting with value for money holidays from £89 for one week and from just £10 for each extra week. Fly direct from Manchester to the Algarve, Tunisia, Tenerife, Southern Spain, Benidorm and Majorca. To get your free copy, phone 0282 50833 or simply call into any ABTA travel agent. Air Tours, leading the way to the sun. Here. This will make the waiting easier. Simmons Cider has been the pride of Herefordshire for over 250 years. But now it's here in green or Whitley land for you to enjoy. It's been a long time, Billy. Billy? Yeah, but it was worth the wait. Oh, Billy! Simmons, the cider worth waiting for. Now we're motoring. 1,200 Austin Rover dealers are waiting to prove it. Call in or ring now. Don't buy any car until you test drive the Mini, Metro, Maestro, Montego, or the Rovers. The nation's new cars. Now we're motoring. Your lovely clean floor. Is it as clean and safe as it looks? Cleaning gets rid of the dirt you can see. But what about the germs you can't? Well, now, here's some good news. There's a thorough, easy cleaner which has disinfectancy built in. Flash. Flash works to fight the dirt you can see and the germs you can't. Flash for the dirt you can see and the germs you can't. Lion's apricot mandolins, baked with pride. to part three of Ultra Quiz 85. Right, Ultra Quizzers, would you like to come back and join Stu and Sarah in the centre here? As you can see, we've still got far too many contestants here. Who's going to lose? Who's going to live to fight another day? We're going to find out very, very shortly as the tension mounts now in Bournemouth on the £10,000 treasure trail with just two games to go. Right, and now we're going to play a game called Who's Who? Oh, good. I've read that book. What book? Who's Who? Good book, that. Who's... not Who's Who, Who's Who? Who's Who? Who's Who? Which zoo? This zoo! Stu? What? Short for stupid. <laughs> Let's play Who's Who? Ta -da! And leading the parade, of course, is that lovely elephant, Rami. Who, of course, gave me a, a lift earlier in the show. Thank you very much, Rami, for the lift. Beautiful creature. That's Rami leading our parade, a lovely elephant. Right, and next up, we've got a rather attractive camel there, who's obviously got the hump, or two. Oh, I do, got the hump. And following closely behind, we have a llama. And the llama is the one with four legs. Now, there's a lovely little animal there, trotting along behind its owner. Now, believe it or not, he's a zebu, but you've never heard of one of those. Now, drawing level with the zebu who's pulled up, we have a bison. That's one of those things you wash your hands and face it. Close behind the bison are two horses who look like they've still got their pyjamas on. Zebras, of course, we all know that. And finally, we have one lovely little baboon. That's Aww. sweet. There we are, little baboon. Last but by no means least. Hope you're all watching very, very carefully because we're now going to ask you the very next question. So gather round. No, nice and close. Nice and close. Right. Now the question is, are you all listening? The zebu is a species of domestic cattle called the Brahman in the United States. The zebu is a species of domestic cattle called the Brahman in the United States. Now, is that true or false? Go to the blue circle if you think it's false, to the red circle if you, if you think it's true. You've got five seconds, starting from now. Go for it. 
Is it true? Is it false? Make your mind up, time, folks. Come on. Time's running out. Get in those circles. Is it true or is it false? Right then, we've all made our minds up. Yes, nobody move. Nobody move. Right, bone crushers, in you come. Welcome back, boys. Right, now the question was, the zebu is a species of domestic cattle called the Brahman in the United States. True or false? And the answer is true! Congratulations to everyone in the red circle, bone crushers, for the losers into the lion's den! How many survivors, Sarah? 59. 59 survivors. Oh, I could duff a daffodil. Still too many. Well, as if the tension wasn't enough here in Bournemouth tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're now about to witness one of the most death-defying stunts of all time. Please watch now very carefully. Ladies and gentlemen, pray silence, please. In just a few moments, Mr. Roy Franson, the world's most daring high diver, well, set himself alight and plunge 50 feet into the blazing pool below. Pray silence, please. In just a few minutes, we'll see Roy Franson ascend the high tower to perform his sensational dive of death, on fire, into fire. The dive in which he literally takes his life in his hands. A stunt in which the very slightest miscalculation will mean death. A word of warning, if you have a nervous disposition, don't watch this act. Mothers with very small children are advised to stand well back because what we're about to see is something truly sensational. Now, you see him now preparing to dice with death, once more wearing an ordinary cotton boiler suit painted silver. This is not asbestos. Asbestos would be too heavy and stiff and would restrict movement at the moment of impact and risk a broken neck. His face is masked against the intense heat which the petrol generates. As soon as he gets his suit ready, buckled, everything in order, he now prepares to ascend the tower to his position high above us. When he gets to the top and all is prepared, his assistants will at a ignite the petrol on the tank. Roy will then set himself alight and will come tumbling down into the water, a human comet into the blazing inferno, into a tank of water only five feet eight inches deep. Now he's almost halfway up the mast. How about giving him an encouraging cheer, ladies and gentlemen? continues his climb higher and higher, away from the safety of terra firma, up and up to the little platform at the top. And there, a giddy 50 feet from the ground, he'll soon be poised, preparing for that death-defying plummet into the scorching hell below. Now, I think you'll agree that if anyone deserves an extra special round of applause in a, in a moment, Roy does. So when he gets to the top, let's give him a tremendous cheer, his biggest cheer ever. Not yet, because he hasn't quite made it. Wait for it. Wait for him to wave. Two or three more steps to go. He's there, ladies and gentlemen. How about it? Well, I'm sure Roy heard that Please, up there. I really appreciate it. Please. Yes, he did. He's waving. Please. Oh, 
a fantastic dive into a sea of flames, but is he all right? Head is bowed. Looks as if there might be a problem. jump off a doll's house. Woo! Brilliant. Right then, so our final game. Ultra quizzes, please gather round because Stu's got the final question. You've almost got your hand on that tickets to Jersey and the £10,000 treasure trail. Right, gather round, that's it. Come in nice and close because very, very shortly I'm going to ask you a question. But first of all, please listen to these facts very, very carefully. Right. Now, the platform is 50 feet high, and the pool into which Roy Franson dives is 5 feet 8 inches deep and holds 2,990 gallons of water. Roy Franson is 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighs 11 and a half stone. Okay? I'll just repeat that for you. The platform is 50 feet high. The pool is 5 feet 8 inches deep and holds 2,990 gallons of water. Roy Franson is 5 feet 8 inches and he weighs 11 and a half stone. OK, got that? Right. So, ultra quizzes. The question is, at what speed to the nearest mile per hour, what speed to the nearest mile per hour was Roy Franson's speed as he came in to hit the water? All right, that's your question. What to the nearest mile per hour was Roy Franson's speed? Okay, now as you can see, over here, we have a circle divided into segments. Those segments range from 31 to 70 miles per hour. So there lies your answer, Ultra Quizzes, between 31 and 70 miles per hour. Very shortly, we want you to go and stand on the segment which you think was Roy Franson's speed to the nearest mile per hour. We're going to give you a couple of seconds to think about it, but just think, the holiday of a lifetime, 10,000 pounds in cash. You're almost on your way to Jersey and round two. Right then, Ultra Quizzes. Please make your choice now. Off we go. Stand on the segment that you think to the nearest mile per hour was Roy Francis' speed. What's it going to be? It lies there somewhere between 31 and 70 miles an hour. As soon as you've made your choice, stand absolutely still. We're all happy there, are we? Right? That's your final choice. Nobody move because now our lovely Ultra Quiz dancers are going to come amongst you, together with our Ultra Quiz boy dancers. There we are. They're going to take you into your respective circles. A gentleman just been led into the red one there. Another one going to the red circle. That's it. Our dancers are going to take you into either the blue circle or the red circle. It's almost decision time. It's almost time to reveal the answer. Of our final question. We don't know whether it's red or blue, do we, Steve? No. What's it going to be? Which is going to be the right circle? <laughs> is it going to be the red circle? Is it going to be the blue circle? Who's going to go to Jersey with a chance of winning £10,000 and the holiday of a lifetime? I don't think now, the clowns know either. Even the clowns are confused. <laughs> Where are we going? We've got winners. We've got losers. We've got aeroplanes. We've also got the answer. Here comes the answer. Just a moment, just a moment. I don't know, I don't know if that's right. I, I, 
Could you just keep moving up? We're not quite sure. Right then. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the answer is, as verified by the University College London and the Physics Department of the University of Cambridge, the answer is 36 miles per hour. And unfortunately, no one quite got the correct answer at 36 miles per hour, but the one nearest, or the people nearest, I should say, the people who are going to Jersey, the tickets are booked, are standing in the blue circle. So there are our winners. Unfortunately, the losers are in the red circle. Congratulations, your tickets are booked. You're going to Jersey for part two. Why not join us next week for part two of Ultra Quiz? Bye.